former director of national intelligence, Texas congressman, former prosecutor. John, welcome back. Um, you know, I, I don't, don't even understand what President Biden was saying today. He wants a ceasefire, and then we'll talk. And then he was asked the other day, he was a presser as he getting on the airplane, uh, are you holding back the uh, IDF uh, ground invasion? And he's, you want him to wait? And he said yes, and then the White House walked it back. John Radcliffe, uh, this is a war, and including, as you know, Iran and its puppets are attacking American, uh, our embassy, our ships at sea. This is war. They took Americans hostage. They've killed Americans. When will there be some fight back from Biden? Well, Larry, you know, you made me listen to John Kirby a press conference a little while ago, and it sounded like he was reading from some instruction manual about all of the things that Iran was doing to help Hamas and Hezbollah. And as you correctly pointed out, um, you know, the uh, 1,300 Israelis, 1,400 Israelis were, were killed, but 32 Americans now. And, the, uh, and so that your viewers understand, the Americans weren't uh, killed in some uh, kinder or gentler manner. Mm. Americans were beheaded. Mm. Americans were raped. Mm. Americans were stabbed, shot. All of that uh, has taken place, and there's no outrage from this administration. And, you know, I will, I will quibble with the great Larry Kudlow a little bit. Um, you have given credit, but you've given too much credit to the Biden administration for what they've done in the last two and a half weeks. Larry, um, uh, I'm not focused on the last two and a half weeks. I'm more concerned about the last two and a half years. A guy should only get so much credit for fighting a fire that he started. And this goes to, to the heart of the failure of this Iranian policy for two and a half years that really created the circumstances on the ground. Larry, these things weren't happening when you and I were in the White House. They weren't happening when Donald Trump was there because Iran couldn't afford to do these things. Iran was broke, therefore Hamas was broke, and Hezbollah was broke. They weren't planning these uh, operations. And that, that's not my opinion, Larry. That's what our own intercepted communications about what the Iranians were telling each other. That's also what foreign exchange reserves were reflecting about uh, Iranian assets. And so all of this has taken place because of the reversal by the Biden administration two and a half years ago. And, you know, to your point about the ceasefire, Larry, the very first statement, the first tweet that came out of this administration was by Anthony Blinken uh, on October 7th calling for a ceasefire, mm. which he then later withdrew. Mm. The first tweet put out by any agency within the Biden administration w was the U.S. administration on Palestinian affairs, which called for a ceasefire. Uh, Joe Biden has made comments about, you know, uh, a ceasefire, and then they've had to walk it back or explain that he misheard the question. They've had a schizophrenic policy here. The reason, Larry, that they're so concerned is that as this thing escalates, the, the inevitable analysis is how did this happen and how was Iran able to orchestrate what might become a regional war or even a world war? And the answer is going to be because of Biden's policies towards Iran for the last two and a half years. Well, the inconvenient fact, as you say, uh, I will stand partially corrected. I mean, some statements are better than no <laughs> statements, but I, the big picture, you're 100 percent right. Uh, the inconvenient fact is that Biden has appeased Iran, and uh, Iran is unappeasable. And there has been um, more appeasement and no action, and so the sanctions have basically been lifted no matter what they say. So I'm saying to you, John Radcliffe, if Biden were serious, let's take Kirby. Kirby's reading this, as you say, this manual. Somebody gave him a statement, so they want to sound tough. It was like the first acknowledgement I've really heard that Iran is the puppeteer and the financier, et cetera, et cetera. But they're not going to do anything about it. Uh, Mitch McConnell, okay, not the biggest right-wing hawk in the, in the group, but Mitch McConnell wrote in the Wall Street Journal last week, and I quoted him, gave him a tip, said, look, we should be interdicting or, and or impounding Iranian ships that are carrying oil to China and Lord knows where, that are carrying drones to Russia, that are developing the oil revenues and the foreign exchange reserves that you just cited a moment ago, a point that I've made many times. We should be impounding this right now, right now, because we are now saying Iran is behind this. What are we going to do about it? Let's go back and, I mean, you've got, you know, uh, senators saying this on both sides of the aisle. So where's the administration? 
Well, Larry, uh, you know, uh, as you know, uh, further sanctions dropped this week. The UN Security Council resolution against Iran's ability to test ballistic missiles, to trade ballistic missiles, to develop nuclear defense systems and offensive systems were all allowed to lapse by the United States. Uh, you know, and they had the ability to stop that. They had the ability to call for a snack, snap back of that. And they didn't do it because their stated reason is there a, there's a fear of escalation. They're, they're, they're afraid of uh, Iran. You're right. What worked in the Biden administration, or I mean, what worked in the Trump administration can work in the Biden administration. It was a combination of lethal force taken against uh, the likes of the, you know, their top general, Qasem Soleimani, coupled with crippling sanctions that you, Larry Kudlow, helped develop and implement. And that made Iran poorer, weaker, less influential, and incapable of doing the things that they're doing right now. The Biden, uh, it, it's just a, a disaster. I mean, I didn't think there could be a worse policy than their Afghanistan policy, but their Iran policy is worse, and it's caused more damage. But they could reverse that. They should reverse that. And here's what they should do, Larry. They should admit they made a mistake, much as Jimmy yes. Carter admitted he yes. made a mistake yes. with, with Russia and Afghanistan. Yes. They should admit they made a mistake. They were wrong about Iran. They can't be trusted. They're as evil as everyone said they were, and that we're going to take actions to, debil to debilitate them and their influence in the region. And they could do that, and we would all support them and cheer them on. But there's no sign that that's coming. You know, look, Mnuchin and I and others, Mnuchin and I... In plenty of meetings, O'Brien's in these meetings, advised President Trump, then President Trump, to keep Iran out of the world banking system. You keep them off the so called dollar wire, okay? You know a little bit about this. There's a Federal Reserve wire, there's a clearinghouse bank wire. Keep them off the wire. And that means any third country, you can make a deal with them, but you can't pay for it. So, guess what? Commerce dried up. Guess what? The shipment stopped. Guess what? Since nobody could pay for it, nobody could insure it, nobody could um, transact it, then they went broke. They went essentially broke. They had a couple of billion dollars of foreign exchange. So Trump okayed that, and we did implement it. Now, I want to ask you about this. Your point, last Wednesday, the expiration of the sanctions on the um, ballistic missiles to Iran. Uh, Mr. Blinken, Sex State Blinken, puts out this whole rigmarole, the United States' commitment to counter Iranian weapons development and proliferation. And he goes through a whole thing, including things like interdictions, and I'm taking new actions, and we won't let them do this, and we won't let them do that. But he didn't make a formal UN. We didn't get uh, any snapback for, what is this, Security Council Resolution 2231. Now, I don't know whether that snapback is worth the paper it's written on, because they didn't implement it in the first place, but at least you could have done that. They didn't even do that. So... I'm just saying, John, well, the, now go ahead, because I, I don't understand this. Well, I didn't understand Blinken's statement, and everybody's criticizing it because it didn't get the Security Council resolution snapped back. And they should have snapped back because what they had was the international community condemning and prohibiting um, Iran from doing these things. And now, you know, the U.S. has put its own sanctions on against certain individuals, but mm. they've lost the international community. And really what they should do, this is an opportunity, Larry. It wasn't just Americans that was killed. It was, it was Brits. It was French. It was, there were all sorts of people that were butchered by Hamas. And this would be the time to say, you know what? Iran was behind this. We blame Iran for this. And they are not eligible to become a member of the nuclear community, period. End of story. And the international community is unified in taking whatever steps are necessary against Iran's nuclear program to do that. And they're just... They're just whiffing on that opportunity. Or the world financial community. Or the world business community. In other words, shut their water off. We can do that. We did that, for heaven's sake. Trump did that. People may mock him and yell at him and this and that and him. He did that. And he ran. They were whimpering, for God's sakes. Soleimani was killed. And what did Iran do about it? Nothing. Why? Because they didn't have any resources. Anyway, I got to get out. I, I'm, all, I'm so fired up. I just hate it when administration fails to admit what are clear facts to any observers, okay? I know I'm a Republican to you, but there are certain factoids that you have to look. You can't make up your own factoids, John Ratcliffe. You know what I mean? You just can't make that up. And the country knows Should that. Should always put our national security.
always put our national security posture above politics, and that's not happening yes. right now. All right. John Ratcliffe, the best of the best.